Hello everyone and welcome to the SBN Newscast. Don't worry, we haven't lost Kendra, we're just doing something slightly different this week. We wanted to take a moment to discuss why we're doing this show and how we hope to grow it over the rest of 2021. As the head of marketing at SBN, I'm absolutely spoiled with the amount of news, content, stories, events and announcements to share from our incredibly talented members, ambassadors and partners. As a small team, we don't often shine as much light on the positive news coming out of Scotland as we could. The SBN newscast is designed to act as a platform for us to share these inspiring and encouraging stories with the whole SBN community. Additionally to this, we have the SBN podcast series led by Fraser Allen, a collection of interviews with some of the most influential business leaders in the Scottish ecosystem. It is another place where you can hear from those who are at the top of their academic fields, have built international companies, run global charities, compete at the peak of their sport, and much more. These all highlight the amazing things Scottish people can achieve on a global stage. In order to emphasise these stories more, we're going to start scheduling our news and podcasts to release on alternate weeks. We'll be adding them as LinkedIn events so you can join us on release and, of course, catch all the past episodes on the Scottish Business Network website. I would run through some of the guests we've had on, but instead of that, we've put together some highlights from our episodes so far so you can see some of the exciting things we've covered. Yes, well, the book is really pulling together a lot of the work I've been doing over the last sort of 15, 20 years. And um, it's because I'm running this online program now, which is a six week, quite intense program, I have so often wished that I could send more information on the different masterclasses that I'm running every week. And so this is pulling a lot of the research, a lot of the neuroscience behind some of the steps to becoming more significant and a lot of practical tips around it. So it's adding a lot more depth to what I'm doing. Um, and I've really enjoyed writing it and doing the research behind it and lockdown and not having to travel um, has given me that extra time to put that into place. And my plan was to launch the book and then launch the online programme. But of course, when we went into lockdown and everybody was really struggling, it just felt like the right time to launch the online programme. So I launched it in June and currently I'm taking the eighth cohort through it and just loving it and seeing real transformation. And then it just seemed to be the right time to get this message out globally um, and to launch the podcast. And through the network, I was introduced to various people who have really helped me to get up to speed very quickly with the podcast. And I'm just loving it, loving every minute of it. Yeah, sorry, my, my noisy assistant has joined me here. Um, well, there's kind of four things I do, I do really. Uh, you know, first, first is the, the writing that I've mentioned, you know, uh, mainly B2B, right? I, I, I tend to do a lot of writing quite about quite complex and dry subjects, bringing them to life. Uh, tackling areas that a lot of jobbing freelancers would shy away from. Um, I've done a, a, um, a lot of content strategy and kind of tactical work with, with brands over the years. So I know a lot of companies are looking at fresh ways to tell the, the story of their brand uh, in the current circumstances. So I can certainly help with that. Um, and a lot of project management work. So if you've got comms marketing um, requirements and you can't handle them yourself or you don't want to, you know, I can take on that responsibility. And finally, um, people will know me from the Scottish Business Network podcast that Angus has appeared on in the past, in the background. And um, so I can help you with your podcasts, uh, you know, if that's something you're looking at. Uh, I was having a discussion with Russell and Christine, and we thought, you know, um, that one of the good ways to highlight the opportunities of India is actually what is going on here and uh, on a weekly basis for me to actually capture, for me as a business person, you know, what are the kinds of trends that I see that could impact and could be of interest to Scottish uh, companies or Scottish businesses. And uh, that seems to be gaining a lot of traction. And please do um, stay tuned to this. And I request any SBN members, if you have any other specific feedback, anything else, you can always uh, reach out to me. And uh, some of the companies that started out as small startups here in Bangalore became very big brands, companies yep. like Infosys, Wipro, Biocon, you may be familiar of these names, which are part of the world you're at. They started as small startups here. So there's a lot of opportunity. I would hope to bring to you, to SBN members, this opportunity every week because it's so fast changing, so dynamic, you know, so that you can get a, a feel of, of what the market is like through this media update. Thank you. 
Yeah, yeah. so um, thanks, Scott. We're really excited about doing this um, event with uh, Africa Scotland Business Network and the Scottish Business Network. So we're going to be coming together to celebrate um, International Women's Day on the 8th of March for a fantastic panel discussion. And being true to this concept of balance, we've got some amazing female panelists and some amazing male panelists. And we're going to be talking with them around what this concept of, of balance means to them in their work lives and in their personal lives. Um, you know, I think we all trying to, 2020 was a, a challenging year, to put it mildly. <laughs> trying to, um, you know, sort of refocus on what are the things that are important to us? What are the things that we were doing prior lockdown and COVID that we don't actually want to do anymore? And so the space is really around, um, you know, it's, it's obviously International Women's Day and, and women have often been laboured with the difficult task of doing it all, right? Yeah. <laughs> and that is really crazy. And men have been tasked with this, this um, oftentimes this burden of being the breadwinner, being the strong one, not being able to tap into their emotions and express themselves, which is also terrible, you know. Toxic masculinity is, it's called toxic masculinity because it's poisonous. So it's not like men have come across, you know, come out of this, this patriarchy and this huge imbalance unscathed at all. So it's also to create a, a welcoming space where we start to understand each other as well. You know, how, how are men coping with this? What are the changes that they want to make? How do they want their futures to be? And for women, what are the concepts around balance that we need to start bringing into our lives where having it all is not necessarily a, a attainable goal or even something that we should be pushing women to do working crazy climbing the corporate ladder driving their own businesses being a mother all this kind of stuff and oftentimes neglecting ourselves and just being completely out of balance until we reach rock bottom and burn out um so this is really just speaking to our amazing panelists we've got sylvia baldock who is the founder of becoming significant she's fantastic uh, coach she yeah. leads teams she's just really an incredible inspiring person um in enabling communities and individuals to become more significant so she's going to be holding the conversation which is brilliant um the other our male panelists i can't announce just yet because we're just confirming them today um but we also have fiona mckinnon who heads up um moment company and they're really around um, enabling mindfulness and meditation, making it more accessible for people, which is just brilliant. And yeah, we'll be announcing the other panelists, but we're really excited just to have this open dialogue where our panelists are going to get a little bit vulnerable, a little bit opening their hearts um, to where they are right now and sharing some of their learnings around what balance means in their lives and how they're trying to attain it. Um, over yeah. and above that, we intend to have three, if you like, technology splashes this year where we launch new elements to what drones can do uh, in the entertainment sector. And then over and above that, we intend to become active in the North American market and beyond. So uh, there's a lot to do. Uh, it's, uh, we, we're really grateful to have an amazing audience, but also the founding team seems to have grown beautifully and organically uh, with some amazing skill sets. Um, and we, we've had investors coalesce around this idea. We've had the team invest around, uh, um, uh, coalesce around this idea. And, you know, it feels like clients also see what we're trying to do and gravitate towards us. And, uh, and, and because of that, I think we're going to have some really groundbreaking uh, bits of innovation with some amazing uh, landmark clients over the coming few months. Yeah, absolutely. I would say that for anyone who's planning an event going forward is to recognize that you're planning an event for the virtual or the hybrid experience in that space. So whereas up until this year, we might have just taken an event and just put it into a platform like Zoom or Teams or something else, we have now got that opportunity to design a specific event for the virtual experience because we've all had to learn this year and we've all learned by attending events, by running events, by sponsoring, by hosting, whatever that, is, whatever that looks like. And so being able to take something and, and designing it for, for virtual, so shorter, snappier sessions, making sure there's interactions in platforms, giving people the opportunity to network, 
or go into breakout rooms and have discussions. And, and on the other side, you know, giving sponsors and speakers the opportunity to really maximize their involvement in an event. And, and again, from an organizer perspective, is, is being able to also monetize those things um, in a way that makes, makes sense and adds value for everyone, um, whether that's ticket fees or whether that's sponsorship or whether it's something else. What the digital and virtual platforms are offering is that opportunity to give people the, the metrics post event to say, this number of people interacted with this event from these countries, they were on for this length of time, they interacted with X, Y, and Z in the platform. And those kind of, those kind of metrics and that intelligence is, is difficult to find unless you do a survey, but it's still, it can be skewed in a live event. But actually in a virtual event, the, the stats are there, the, the metrics are there because the interactions are measured by delegate. Um, so there's some really cool kind of interactions that you can measure and, and, and monitor and analyze. And, and I think the opportunities that a virtual event gives us is that a, a marketing campaign can be a lot longer than just a, a one day event or show or conference or whatever, is, is that that campaign is, a, is much bigger in the sense that you've got the, the start of the event, the during, and then the post, which can be quite, quite a long sort of time um, in the sense that you can really market, remarket, reuse content, um, share you know, nuggets, create webinars off the back of it. You know, so there's, there's a really kind of, there's an extension I think of that, of that campaign and, and the effectiveness of that is also, is also amplified, which is really, which is really quite clever um, and really special. And I think that gives us loads of opportunity to, to really think about our events. And I think another thing I would add is that we might have up until you know, spring of this year, just run events for the sake of running them, or we've always run this event, or we've always had this meeting once a month or whatever, but actually it's really been able to analyze why we run an event and what value we're bringing is another thing to think about when we're planning. So whether you're running one event in a year or 30, look at every single event and look at the kind of the strategy behind that event, but also the, the kind of strategy overall, what brings all of your events together, and then also how you segment those events and, and what they're achieving for you and what outcomes you expect, and then also then how you measure them and how that fits into the, the objectives of the organization or the business. Yeah, I, th I think there's a lot of opportunity for, you know, COVID allowed us to really reflect. And this has been a year of reflection where once you take away the trappings of what is uh, what it means to be Scottish, it really boiled down to really how do we how do we evolve as a society not just in san francisco but all st andrews societies all caledonian clubs all scottish business interests and how can we group together as a nation as a, a global presence from the scottish diaspora to really be the voice of scotland you know we are the hands or the uh, if i coin a business phrase the franchisees of scottish culture yeah. um there's a lot of good that we can do when we start holding hands together and moving in unison to be able to create a, a presence. And I don't think people realize how much of a presence we have in America, both historically, um, you know, as the founding fathers of, of America are very much Scottish um, in, in their presence, but also in new technology and new business with the University of Edinburgh's space program, a lot of um, Scottish in investment in Silicon Valley. Um, and we are now part of what is essentially the modern day gold rush. And so history is only just repeating itself. We just wanna make sure that we are there so we can show our Scottish values and be able to reinterpret what does it really mean to be Scottish? Um, whether it means that it's who we are as a people, but also what the faces that represent Scotland really look like when you band us together. And, and I think there's a good opportunity here to bring in fa uh, voices like Jackie Kay, bring in voices um, you know, like famous comedians that are, that are out there, really good chefs that are out there. And, and really that changing movement where we're a multinational and a multicultural society rather than, you know, what has been portrayed in cinema and, and uh, a, a lot of more tourist-based mindset. Well, the okay. optic, that's, that's a good question. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I covered 
you suppose who the main claimants are, you know, in, in Scotland, there is a phenomenal innovative community, multi-sector, you know, looking at the central belt up through Dundee, which is an absolute world beater in, in tech, as we could clearly see. Aberdeen is, I suppose, repurposing a lot of the wealth up in Aberdeen towards software development. Um, I mean, I, I've been speaking to companies lately who are developing apps to, for, for, for the NHS, NHS regions to optimize their bed allocations to make hospitals more efficient, which is particularly prevalent as you'd expect in, in, in the current environment. Um, we've worked with and recently performed a claim, R&D claim for, for a business that um, is, allows large organizations such as banks and insurance companies who are involved in the protection of data and the transfer of money to be more nimble in the face of cyber crime. Cyber crime, again, with the prevalence of, of online activity in the pandemic, businesses have had to you know, increase their guard against that. We work with businesses in the, in the hospitality and leisure sector who have naturally been a, a very, very hard hit. I mean, one particular client who we help with, with R&D claim has seen their turnover plummet 95% year on year. They will probably make it through, but the R&D tax relief that we were able to get them was, was a small, albeit small, but, but important measure to combat their loss in revenue. You know, we, we, the types of claimants that we see are quite simply looking for extra cash, to, to increase that operating runway, offset a fall in revenue. In the case of the, the cyber crime business that we, I, I just mentioned, the, the, the quite frankly enormous claim that we were able to, to secure for them, and these are annual claims, it was a significant uplift on, on their previous year. That, that was a huge cash boost to the balance sheet. It actually happened to coincide with, with an approach from a, from a buyer, and, and it, it made them a more attractive valuation on that basis. And they were ultimately able to, to close the sale and exit their business at a particularly high amount. In fact, it was a pretty high profile exit uh, last year. So there are many ways that R&D tax credits can help businesses. And we're seeing across Scotland, across the huge innovative community, um, claims occurring everywhere and anywhere. It's really a question of business owners asking themselves, what nature of innovation and uncertainty am I trying to overcome here? Am I eligible? And that's where it's really rather wise to engage a tax specialist like myself at Amplify Solutions um, to, to help them with that analysis. And we work in partnership with our accountants as well. I should say that the biggest source of our referrals and, and new businesses from the accountancy network, but we can work hand in hand with those accountants to help them get a better outcome from the scheme. Well, we're really excited to be working with an Edinburgh company um, that has been using a, a new form of scanning device. Um, it has been uh, trialled in other industries, and I think, um, it, uh, Gavin will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was originally intended for the space industry. But we've trialled it on our Gerlock site, um, and we were able to, without drilling, we were able to, to do a deep pen penetration um, at depth and find out that the ore deposit that we, we know is there uh, is actually of a far greater extent. So the use of that kind of technology, which is groundbreaking um, and unique in the industry, um, is fantastic for us in terms of costs because um, it'll potentially reduce costs in exploration by about um, nine tenths, um, and, and also environmentally because we don't actually physically have to dig every time. You know, we the data is telling us that, that it's a good place to, to yeah. look. Um, so certainly working with them, we're going to move that down to our Ayrshire deposit, hopefully um, in the new year. And we're really excited about that being a big copper, copper porphyry resource. Um, and we're, look, we're looking for partners. Um, we've got a trade mission planned um, to Ontario, hopefully uh, in the new year. Hopefully doing some more stuff um, with SBN um, stateside. Yeah. And um, we've recently um, been working in partnership with um, the British Embassy in Beijing to, to look for investors in Asia. I suppose we're quite a niche project in one sense because people don't really associate this kind of mining industry with Scotland. But the fact is, um, we were at it, you know, um, way before um, a lot of traditional countries. And before, I suppose, as it was known then, that the new world came into play as a resource yeah. uh, of gold for us. So, um, yeah, making friendships, making connections and really kind of getting our profile raised and meeting as many people as possible um, so we can take it to the, ne the next stage, which is, which is hopefully opening Gerlach as a going concern uh, quite, quite soon. 
Yeah, so I spent Brilliant. 15 wow. years in um, the film and media industry. So I worked in feature films, music videos, very naively about 15 years ago, set up my own production company um, and ended up doing some really good jobs. So I'm going to name drop a bit, which is really gross. But, you know, people like Jay-Z, Rihanna, Calvin mm -hmm. Harris, but had an amazing time. Um, and then also got to the point that um, had a bit of an awakening and I was thinking I'm loving doing this work and making films and music videos but I want to do something which kind of has a bit more meaning so uh, 10 years ago I moved back to Lancashire where I'm from originally I'd been in London for nearly 10 years I uh, moved back to Lancashire in a very rural area and reconnected with the countryside which was the best thing that I ever did um, and then I did a master's in innovation management, which is when I came across um, the triple bottom line framework, people, planet and profit. And it really resonated with me. I'm really ambitious, but this, this notion of you can be really ambitious and, you know, start business, grow business and be really successful whilst also doing lots of good and helping the planet, helping other people, you know. Um, so I be, began my sustainability journey 10 years ago and then over the last few years started working with very ethical brands who, you know, like Quorn Foods we've been making films for for a few years now. Um, and then I, I basically one day was thinking I need to do more, I want to do more to help the planet. Um, I'm really passionate about environmentalism, rewilding animals. Um, and I thought I want to do more. It's great working with like-minded brands because obviously you can help them with their purpose-driven messages and make them into amazing films. But I wanted to do something which would also offer something to global citizens to kind of plant that seed of ethical living. And that's when Planet Shine was born. And um, we're just kind of, we've just taken on a new content director who's based in Los Angeles, who's absolutely brilliant. Um, and, and we seem to be growing really well. We've got private investors um, and lots of really interesting projects underway at the moment. So it's a really exciting time. So um, I'll just give you a bit of background. I look after the kind of strategy area STV and probably about two years ago, uh, late 2018, we launched our STV Growth Academy series and we run a series of events that are free to attend for any businesses across Scotland and the aim really is to share tools and insights that can help businesses grow. So we're very fortunate we've got a lot of experts across our business whether it's in marketing or development or communications or research um, so we like to be able to share some of those skills but also welcome our partners um, to join us and actually just think about how can we I guess enhance and drive the Scottish economy for different types of businesses and enhance that skill sharing essentially um, so we've done recent events with um, people like Sam H who did a mental well-being special um, so I think you know, now more than ever, we're all thinking about how we can support each yeah. other at work, how important that is. And um, so that was a really insightful session, really um, high engagement. And actually to see the support coming from people at that event for each other was, was actually really inspiring and, and heartwarming to see how we're all um, pulling together to support each other for mental well-being. We've also done sessions around about communications planning. So we bring in some of our PR experts to talk about, you know, how to write a press release, how to get traction with your press release, you know, how to get into a newsroom with your story, what newsrooms are looking for when they're doing all sorts of coverage. Um, because we recognise that that's very important as part of your growth strategy to let people know, you know, what you're doing and how you're growing. Um, you know, and that's one of the reasons we've partnered, obviously, with the Scottish Business Network, because you guys are, are experts in, in sharing those asks, connecting businesses. Um, and I think that's something that we recognise has been hugely important, that we're all able to come together, share knowledge, but actually collaborate and support each other to have growth overall across Scotland. Kendra and I have big ambitions and are really excited to continue growing this show. If you have news to share or would like to be on the show, please do get in touch. In the meantime, check out the website to catch some previous episodes and see what we've got coming up. And be sure to join us from April 6th to 16th as we have 10 days of Tartan Day celebrating the links between Scotland and North America. If you have an interest in innovation, culture, entrepreneurialism, climate change, education or investment, then you'll find the perfect event for you there. Join us for the celebrations at www.tartanday.scot and we'll see you on the next newscast on April 16th.